If you want to become a truck driver and get in the trucking industry, but you don't know where to start, this is the video for you. I'm going to walk you through every single step that you should know. I'm going to show you how to get your commercial driver license, how to avoid DOT inspections. I'm even going to show you some of the best trucking companies to work for as a new truck driver and what you can expect for a truck driver pay. So in this video, you're going to learn all that and more. In this first part of the video, I got to take it back to the basics. I got to show you how to get your commercial driver license first before we can move on because that's always the first step to becoming a truck driver. The first step in getting your commercial driver license is going to be getting your regular driver license. That way you can get familiar with the rules and regulations and so you're more comfortable with standard driving. Number two, age requirement. So some states you can be 18, some states you can be 21. Usually it's 21, so you're gonna have to check with your state. Number three, once you have those two steps down, once you made sure that you got your regular driver license and you're of age, then the next step is taking the trip down to your local DMV to go ahead and pick up a commercial driver's guide. Once you pick that up, I'll definitely study it front to back, page to page. Don't skip out on any pages. It's very important that you read it all because most of that stuff is on your test. So go ahead and study, study, study that commercial guide. I recommend checking out some apps to help you with your study because when you go take the knowledge exam, then you're gonna find a lot of those questions that you saw in the app, they're actually gonna be on the test. At least that's how it was here where I live. So cool. You're ready to take the test. You're feeling pretty confident, ready to go. I would just head to your DMV. Sometime when it's not busy on a Monday, let them know you're there for your CDL permit and they'll sit you on the computer and you'll go ahead and answer, I think it was like 30 problems. It really depends if you're gonna go for additional endorsements, which I highly recommend. So once you have your commercial learner's permit, you're definitely gonna wanna go ahead and I wouldn't waste any time. Definitely going to want to go ahead and jump into school right away. Congratulations on getting your CDL license. Now you might be asking yourself, should you go to a CDL school or should you go company sponsored training? Before you make that decision, let's, let's look at some of the pros and some of the cons of both of those. Getting your CDL license that's company sponsored versus private trucking school. Check it out. Some pros to going to private truck driving school you're going to be able to earn your CDL license in a matter of about four weeks, maybe five weeks. It does, of course, depend on what school you're going to. And another benefit to private truck driving school, a lot of them are going to offer nighttime classes. So if you got a daytime job, you're going to be able to definitely just head over to your school right after work. And that's exactly what I did. You might be asking yourself, how long does it take to get your CDL license? It does depend on the state, I believe, but here in Washington state, the law does require 160 hours of training. On average, it looks something like this. Classroom time, 40 hours. Proficient development, 16 hours. Combined lab training, range and observation, about 70 hours. Training and backing maneuver, 16 hours and about on average you're going to get 18 hours of driving on the street to pass your skills exam some more pros of going to private truck driving school it's going to allow you to stay close to home because you're not going to have to travel too far private cdl school is definitely going to give you good preparation to pass your exams as mentioned before also they're definitely going to help you with job placement this one is probably my most favorite the class sizes they're a lot smaller which means that you're going to get more one-on-one -on -one time which is definitely going to be helpful for backing. Trust me. When it comes to private truck driving school, it's pretty cool because they're going to allow you to either get a class B license or a class A license. You get to pick and choose the endorsements that you want to add. However, let's not act like there's not any cons to private truck driving school. Some of the cons attending CDL school is definitely going to set you back because most of the time you're going to have to pay up front and not everybody usually has that type of cash. Another con is you're not gonna get paid while you're doing your CDL training through private truck driving school, but it's gonna offer that flexibility. You might train in poor equipment. Attending private CDL school, another step back, you might have to take some time off work to complete your training, which can be financially costly to your family if you have a family or, or even yourself to support. And so that's why that's a con. If you're worried that you're not gonna have a job after going to private truck driving school, you should be, because no job is guaranteed once you get your CDL license through them but most of them do have a job placement program that they will help you out with. Even though most truck driving companies are gonna require one year after CDL school, they will still usually help you find a job. 
Let me know in the comments down below, did you guys go to CDL school or a company sponsored CDL training? And don't forget to subscribe. Let's check out some pros to company sponsored CDL training. One of the biggest pros to company sponsored CDL training, you're gonna have little to no upfront cost, no down payments or anything. Usually they're gonna make you sign a one year contract or so in exchange for some training. Super helpful for anyone who don't have those funds necessarily. The cost is usually about $5,000 or more easily. But after you see out training with said company, whoever you decide to work for, usually they're gonna take out 40 bucks or more, whatever the payment plan is, out of your paycheck every week. Still beats paying all that cost up front. Oh, check it out. Company sponsored CDL training, that means you're hired. So you're not gonna have to worry about looking for a career after you get your CDL, which is another benefit. Training with the company that you're going to work for means you're hired. And now you won't have to mess around with finding a trucking company. Problem solved. Another pro is you're usually gonna get paid for your training, unlike private trucking school. I didn't say it's much though. Once your training's completed with that company, it's pretty cool because they're gonna assign you a truck that you can call your own home. But there's some cons to company sponsored CDL training. When they offer free CDL training, that usually comes with signing out your contract as I mentioned before, which if you back out of that contract, then you're gonna have to owe a lot more than you would have if you just went to private CDL school. But look at it this way, just sign the contract, get the year or two experience, and you'll be able to move on to a better company. Another bad thing is if you have family or you have a good career going on, the companies that offer free training, if they're not local, you're gonna have to travel all the way across the United States or wherever they're located. And that can be a problem. And a lot of companies, even if you are locked into that one year contract, you're still gonna have to pay that tuition back. And when your training is complete, you're usually gonna work for lower wages. Ask around, I'm not making this up. I don't think that's fair. During your driver training, you're probably gonna have to team with another driver, sleeping in the same truck together for about a few months. All right, great. Now that you haven't figured out whether you should go to CDL school or company sponsored, here are the top 20 best trucking companies to work for. And this list will definitely help jog your brain. The salaries that you're gonna see for each company is just a rough estimate. I definitely recommend reaching out to the individual companies and seeing how much they actually start you off with. Number one, Swift. Number two, Schneider. Number three, JB Hunt. Number four, May Trucking. Number five, CFI. Number six, Heartland Express. Number seven, CR England. Number eight, Ace Hardware. Number nine, Western Express. Number 10, Cisco. Number 11, McLean. Number 12, US Foods. Number 13, AutoZone. Number 14, Linden. Number 15, Loves. Number 16, Old Dominion. Number 17, Saya. Number 18, Systems Transport. Number 19, ABF. Number 20, TWT. I bet you're wondering how much you can make as a truck driver and the different type of ways you can get paid I'm gonna explain all that for you right now. Different ways you can make money as a truck driver. Let's talk about it. As a truck driver, they have something called driver event pay. Basically, driver event pay is gonna be like your store deliveries or drop-offs or your dropping hooks. Of course, depending on your company, the pay structure with that is gonna be a little bit different. And speaking of dropping hooks, that's basically for doubles which is another way you can make money. You get paid a little extra for pulling doubles. This one's pretty common for pretty much all truck drivers is the mileage pay. You get paid by the mile. I know for my company, they started me off at 49 cents per mile. Everywhere is different. I was coming out of CDL school and at the time, I was pretty good. Still is pretty good, by the way. Mileage pay is my favorite way to make money when it comes to regional truck driving because if you're running to Montana a lot from my location, you know, that, that can be 2,500, 3,000 miles a week 
if you're doing that three times a week. That's the sweet spot, you know? And that equals to some pretty decent miles, which equals pretty decent pay. Would you like to get paid for sleeping? That's exactly what sleeper pay is. If you decide to sleep in your truck, you're gonna get paid a little extra for that. Or you do have a choice to get a nice hotel room. You're not gonna get paid extra for that though, but there's other benefits, especially if you're out for a really long time. But if you're definitely looking to rack up some money throughout the end of the year, definitely sleeper pay is where it's at. Chain pay, another way we can earn some cash out here. Companies will pay you when you have to chain up. Pretty sweet deal. I know there's also a lot that won't pay you. And so if you have to throw chains five times a day, guess what? You're gonna get paid for that. And yes, people really do chain up five times a day in the winter time on the west side of the United States. At least you're getting paid for chaining up. How much better can it get? Holiday pay. Yes, we get paid for the holidays. Very nice. Get paid for Christmas and a lot of the major holidays. It's pretty nice to get paid on the holidays and not have to work them. Here's a hidden way you can make money as a truck driver. The Roth Match. Most of these truck driving companies are gonna offer you a Roth match for your 401k. Not all of them will offer that, but a great majority of them will. You're also gonna get paid for back calls. Back calls pretty much when you're done delivering or on your way to a location, maybe you're going back to the warehouse, you're gonna to have to stop, pick up a back call, pick up a load and bring it back to the warehouse or take it to another location. Quarterly contributions, another great way to make money out here. Basically, it's like a bonus every quarter. It's a little bit more detailed and technical than that, but it's safe to just call it a bonus, I guess. A lot of companies will offer that. Some truck drivers don't know the difference between being a regional truck driver and being an OTR, also known as over the road truck driver. So let me go into detail and explain the difference between a regional truck driver and OTR. Because chances are, you're gonna to wanna to be a regional truck driver. And here's why. Regional truck driving is where it's at. Why is regional where it's at versus OTR? Simply because you have more time with your family. That's what it's all about. If you don't have a family, which I hope you do, you know, like mom and dad, or if you don't have a girlfriend, then, you know, listen up for the OTR side of things. But unlike, OTR, regional truck driving, you get familiar with your route. Yeah, it can be a little boring sometimes if you're doing the same route, same route. Or you can decide to be an unassigned driver like me. Now what that means is I'm not assigned to a particular route. I'm unassigned, so I go anywhere they need me to in our region. Every day is definitely different. It can get a little tiring sometimes because being a regional truck driver, you're not gonna have as much time between your 10 hours off because usually when your 10 hours is up, you're hitting the road again. Home time, as a regional driver, the home time you get is pretty good. Come home Friday at 9 a.m. from a Thursday run, so you have the rest of Friday off and you have all day Saturday off, most of Sunday off, and you're back on the road again. So that's one of the things I enjoy about being a regional truck driver is the home time. Also, as a regional truck driver, you still have your freedom. So that's another great thing about regional driving is you do your job, no one bothers you. You have a lot of freedom when you're in a truck and on the road. I mean, these trucks are like 200,000 and up easily. So it's a lot of responsibility that they trust you with. Just like some jobs though, it can be very hard work. It's definitely a quick turnaround sometimes. You do have a lot to worry about out here. One of the things that can be a potential downside for you is that you're gonna have to manually unload your trailer. Some trucking companies, you have ramps, like McLean, they have ramps that you use. And that's why I do think we get paid a little bit more is because we're having to push heavy stuff around and unload it, you know? And that stuff is very heavy. You gotta be careful not to pull your back out, pulling your muscles, smash your fingers, smash your toes. Don't wanna do that. So if you're gonna go regional, Grab yourself some steel toe boots. They come in handy. Now, I do want to let you know that I don't have any over the road experience. I do regional. I guess it is kind of over the road, but what I'm trying to say is I haven't been gone for weeks and weeks at a time. The longest I'm ever out for is up to two days, maybe three. 
if uh, traffic's pretty bad, like during the winter time. So this is just my opinion on over the road trucking. So with that being said, just take it with a grain of salt. So I'm just gonna say over the road trucking is not for you if you have a big family or if you have a girlfriend or perhaps maybe you can't stand being away from home more than two days. That's one of the reasons why I wouldn't do OTR. So just think twice before you make that decision of going on the road for a long time and be ready to put in long driving hours. You'll definitely run your full 11 hours of driving time. So just be ready to do that. Usually you'll probably want to drive for four hours before you take your first bathroom break and then drive until your eight hours is up, take your 30. You don't want to take your 30 minute break at the fill either. But if you do choose OTR, be ready to be gone for a really long time and be ready to put in some long, long hours. But I know there's a lot of people out there that are hard workers and this is perfect for them because they have no family, they have no kids. Or if they do, sometimes, sometimes guys, they just want to get out there and be away. Unfortunately, you know, and the pay. I don't think the pay is good at all, but um, I guess I can't really be talking because I don't do OTR. Being over the road, you're going to have to worry about laundry. You're going to have to worry about like where you're going to take a shower. I'm not trying to be out here, you know, sneaking and stuff. That's also going to set you back some dollars, having to pay for those showers, having to pay for laundry all the time. Unless you're like some people who, who goes weeks without washing their clothes, that's gross by the way. So that's just another reason out of the millions why I personally think regional truck driving is better. However, there's still some good sides to OTR. Let's not get that wrong. You still get your freedom. You're on the road all the time, so you have lots of time to think, lots of time to listen to audiobook, and a lot of time to see the country and explore and practice your backing, get miles and all that experience. You'll rack up the experience pretty quickly while you're OTR. Oh, and as far as I know, you don't really have to unload your freight. So that's, that's a big plus, right? But overall, I really do think regional truck driving is where it's at. If you guys have any questions about regional truck driving, I'll be more than happy to answer you guys' questions. Just drop your comment down below. I do reply to everybody. Although, over the road trucking is still good. I have no doubt in my mind that regional truck driving is still better. All right, cool. So you have a general idea of which company you want to reach out to. Now let's dive into trucking for beginners and truck driving training. I definitely recommend you guys starting off in the summertime, especially if you're on the West Coast where it snows a lot in Colorado, Washington, Wyoming. Usually those places have a ton of snow. So if you're going to be starting off as a new driver, I would just chillax and wait until all the snow passes because with the snow, you may end up crashing or something like that. And your career, as you know, it might be over before truly you even got started. And that wouldn't be good because you got to protect your CDL. And if that means holding off three more months, you know, until winter is over, then that's what you should do. Just make the right decision. Expect to get lost sometimes because you know, even to this day, we all get lost out here. It's just normal, unless you're running a local route or a regional, regional route, you know, um, then obviously in those cases, you're gonna learn your route. So you're not even gonna really need a GPS anymore. It's all gonna be in your head. But over the road, you know, you're gonna get lost. Just expect it, it's gonna happen. Don't stress out, you'll make it through. And that's partially why you don't ever rely on your GPS might want to use something like your Atlas or Google. Expect tight turns. You guys will encounter tight turns that you're going to have to maneuver around. Please be careful and don't hit anything. Hitting things just means you're being careless. Use goal. And if you don't know what goal stands for, it stands for get out and look. I use that almost every day. Why? Because I'm not scared to get out and look. See if I'm going to hit anything where I'm at. Lots of blind spots. I love my CDL and I'm not trying to get any records on my license at all. Better job opportunities if you have a great background record, great driving history, you know? So what's your CDL license worth to you? Getting out and looking? Should be. 
hard to land a great paying company as a new driver. This one is true. And why is it hard? Because you have no experience, okay? You're gonna need to start off with a company who's willing to give you a chance. Just take a little extra time and look for a job. Don't just snatch up the first one. I know I've said this before, but it's very important. You know, do your due diligence, search around for the best trucking company that you can find. Practice backing up. You're definitely gonna wanna practice backing up. Even if you have to pull around the back of a warehouse, you know, you might wanna ask for permission. And if it's pretty empty back there, just practice backing in the docks. Do that as long as you can take it. 45 minutes, sure. But guess what? That's gonna be some of the best time that you invest it. Because when you get out here and you have those tight in between spaces that you have to back into, some are very tight, you know? All that practicing that you've been doing is gonna come in handy. And you're not even gonna be stressing because you've been practicing for days and weeks and months, even well over six months into the journey, I still struggle backing. We all have our bad days. I don't think any truck drivers can back up every day perfectly. Just not gonna happen. Okay, this one is a must. You guys and girls spend a little bit of cash, invest in yourself and get some tools. You know, pick up some tools, get some insulated gloves for the winter coming up because your hands get cold pretty quick. Some nice insulated boots, maybe some snow pants. <laughs> That's what I wear. I wear some snow pants out here when, when you have to chain up, just makes it so much easier. Beanie, the whole winter gear, I consider it tools because if you don't have it, then you're gonna freeze and not be able to do your job as great. So winter gear, gloves, you're gonna wanna pick up a GPS for sure. Speaking of GPS, I actually made an entire video about the best GPS for trucking. The link is in the description. Phone them out, you know, mount your phone up here. That way if your mom's calling you, or your dad's calling you, you'll be able to glance, glance up at your phone very quickly, see who's calling. And you got a Bluetooth headset, that's another tool you should invest in. That way you just push a button while you're driving and voila, hands free. If you guys or girls know any other tools that are missing, let me know in the comments down below. I respond back to every comment. That way everybody else can see it too. So helps us all out. I forgot. You're going to want to get a safety vest. That way, if you're out on the side of the road, chaining or something, you have a little reflectors to help protect you. I'm willing to bet that you can get it for free from your company. Just ask. I know a lot of companies on the road, they'll just provide you with a lot of these things, actually gloves, vest, beanies, sometimes jackets. Another huge mistake that new CDL drivers make is missing road signs. You definitely don't want to go underneath a low bridge like I almost did. That wouldn't be too good. What if it says flagger up ahead, prepare to stop. You're not paying attention to the sign. All of a sudden you're doing 60, 65. You come up on the flagger. Yeah, you're going to have to brake hard and hopefully you don't hit anybody. No good. Pay attention to road signs. This one's one of the most important ones. Failing to plan and not getting clear direction to your next destination. A lot of these warehouses are tricky, tricky, tricky to get into. However, if you call and you plan ahead, then you shouldn't have no problems getting in. Speeding, like that guy was probably speeding. Speeding is not good. You don't want to lose your CDL license that you probably just got a few months ago or, or not, just depending. So don't speed. Not only that, you can put other people at risk. Don't want to lose control of your truck and possibly crash. You definitely want to pay attention to the road conditions and bad weather. It can get pretty slick in the winter time. And if you're speeding, that can lead to an accident. Listening to music while driving. I personally think this is a mistake because you should always be working on yourself. You should always be listening to podcasts or audiobooks. Don't get me wrong, sometimes it is nice to throw on some music, you know, to clear your mind or if that helps you out. But I'm talking about for months and years at a time of pure music. Definitely not good for your mental health. Always be educating yourself and always be learning. Mix it up a little bit. This is definitely a rookie mistake I have made. Not sliding your tandems forward. Your tandems are your axles on the rear trailer. When you slide them forward, you can maneuver the trailer a lot better. 
there's been a corner where I tried to make it. It was just too tight. I got out, slide my tandem forward, and I was able to make the turn, no problem. So you new CDL drivers out there, learn how to slide your tandem forward. It's really easy. Most new trailers, they just have a little button that you pop out. So you'll be able to make those turns a lot easier. Common mistake is mixing the airlines and wondering why the brakes won't release. I've done that a couple times. I even asked another driver what's going on and he came over and said the airlines was mixed up. That was pretty embarrassing. So just know what side your airlines go on. Usually your emergency airline is going to be on the right side, the red one. Misjudging corners. A lot of new CDL drivers, we misjudge corners sometimes. It'd be very scary. Not every corner is going to be marked with those little arrow signs. So you definitely want to take all the corners very cautiously. Don't be overconfident with the corners. As a truck driver, here are some things I wish someone would have told me to avoid DOT inspections. Check it out. How to avoid DOT inspections. This one a lot of people overlook, I would say. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you know your permit book because the last thing you're gonna want is when you get inspected, they say, show me your permit book. And so you're like, here you go, officer. Feeling all confident and stuff. And he's like, hmm, this is expired. This is expired. This is expired. Ticket. Yeah, yeah, you don't want that. So just know your permit book, know what's in there. Make sure you have all the correct licenses for the different states that you're going to be operating in and that's just one less thing you have to worry about out here so we already have enough things to worry about it's a lot of responsibility being a truck driver so this is an easy violation or ticket let me know in the comments down below is it a violation or a ticket easy one that you can avoid so uh definitely just take the 10 minutes you know look through your permit book and uh, make sure it's all good this one is definitely a must if you know of any trucking companies that have a bad reputation stay away make sure you stay away because if they have a bad reputation and you're getting say you have a, a go pass and you're always getting pulled in those scales you know they might start picking on you a little bit because knowing that your company already has a bad reputation more than likely they're going to find something wrong with your tractor so Definitely make sure you're staying away from those bad reputation companies. I don't know of any myself, so I can't list any particular companies. Even if I did, I wouldn't want to put them on blast like that. So yeah, just stay away from those type of companies that have bad reputations. Save yourself the headache in the long run and save your CDL license. And when you're cruising into a scale house, you're gonna to want to make sure you watch your speed. I'm pretty sure I may have said this before, but all the scout houses, they have like speed limits that are posted. Whoa, that's weird. Keeping your ride clean. And that goes for the inside and the outside. So you're gonna wanna make sure you keep your ride clean at all times, windows as well. Be sure that your windows are not chipped, cracked, damaged, or broken learn that in school that's a big red flag that's an easy violation right there to get marked for if they see that they're definitely going to go through your whole entire truck get right underneath it because chances are if you're missing something like that you're missing your brakes your tires underneath the hood where there can be more stuff so don't really open that window for yourself and just make sure you keep your ride clean on the interior and exterior. Another easy way to uh, avoid a simple violation or take it, do not skip out on the wait stations. If they're open, they're gonna wanna pull right in there, okay? Some of these wait stations, they have chase cars. And basically those are just officers on standby waiting for someone like you to blow right past the wait station. And they'll come pull you over. They'll make you go all the way around. And chances are, after they weigh you, they're gonna tell you to come in and most likely you're gonna get inspected. Probably a level three inspection. I wouldn't doubt it. So just be sure to pull in those weigh stations there when they're open. Even if you're not sure that you need to go in, just pull in just to be on the safe side. 
I don't want you guys getting violations or tickets on your CDL license. It's not worth it. Protect your CDL license at all costs. It's better to be safe than sorry out here on the roads. This one's pretty easy to miss, but if you do your pre-trip correctly and you spend some time on it, you know, you're not just blowing through it. But it's gonna be air leaks and your airlines rubbing together. They're not allowed to rub together because if they rub together for too long, it can cause a, a hole in it, you know? Not to mention the air leaks, you can hear them. They're pretty loud. And speaking of air leaks, just the other day, I actually had an air leak on my trailer, as you can see in this clip right here. So uh, we got an air leak down here. See, now that was pretty loud, right? They're very easy to spot most of the time. Also, the day before that, I had a leak in my main line down there right below me. And that was actually pretty loud too. They came out to work on it and uh, they actually had to tow me out another tractor because they couldn't fix it that night. So just be very careful. Pay attention to those air leaks. Don't think that you're all good because when you're passing by an officer and they hear that hissing sound, even at a stoplight, they're probably gonna inspect you. This is also going back with your pre-trip. And I wanna say a lot of these are preventable with a great pre-trip. Not just good, you know, because you can miss some things, but great. Missing lights. Maybe not missing lights, but burnt out lights, I should say. Even one burnt out light is gonna up your chances for being inspected. Especially if you have a burnt out headlight. So when you're doing your pre-trip, even in broad daylight, obviously you're gonna wanna make sure you turn on your flashers and you're checking all, all around your truck very thoroughly. And that's just an easy way to avoid a ticket or a violation. Are tickets and violations the same exact thing? Let me know in the comment below, I'm serious. I'm not sure, because I've never had one, I'm not sure if they're if you get a violation, it's the same as a ticket. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. That would, that would help me out and it would help everyone else out. Rip or missing mud flaps. Yes, I have seen many, many trucks blow past me with no mud flaps or they're ripped or torn, like pretty bad, you know? Maybe that just happened at that time or maybe they're just risking it. But I'm not sure why you'd want to risk something like that, you know? To not be one of those people out there that think that they're all good, nothing can happen to them, and try to wing it with no mud flaps. You know, those also are a safety thing because they help prevent all the rocks kicking up, you know, on the cars and stuff. Especially right now, during the fall, where there's snow on the ground in some places and they throw gravel everywhere. So please just make sure your mud flaps are not torn or missing. And that goes back to your pre-trip, all the part of your pre-trip. And I also just wanna go back to the cracked windshield, guys. It is really a big problem if you do have a cracked windshield. Not only for you, but for other people because driving in the sun and it hits that crack just right, it's gonna blind you and someone in front of you might be slamming on their brakes and you might not have time to react. So, I mean, it's, it's a big safety problem for you and other people. So just make sure that you're getting that taken care of. Might be a few hundred dollars. I'm not an owner operator, so I'm not sure how much it costs, but I'm sure it's not cheap. Just keep up on your, your truck there and you'll have nothing to worry about, you know? They'll definitely lessen your chances of being inspected. You're gonna want to make sure your your triangle reflectors are in working order. Make sure you have those actually on your truck because anytime you break down, it's required that you put those out. And if you don't have those and a DOT officer pulls you over behind you to check on you, see what's wrong, and you don't have those, chances are you're gonna get a ticket for that. Not just a violation, a ticket. Or are those the same thing? This one's also overlooked. 
you're going to want to make sure you put your landing gears all the way up on your trailer. So I guess what I'm trying to say to prevent from getting violations on a DOT inspection is pre-trip, pre-trip, pre-trip. And if you're curious what a level one DOT inspection is, here is an actual full-blown level one DOT inspection. Check it out. Pulled over by Idaho State Police. We're doing inspections today. This is National Brake Safety Week. Okay. So we're trying to get as many trucks looked at as we can. Sounds good. So where are you taking your load today? I'm actually headed home to <laughs> Yeah, I just got done delivering in uh, Lava Springs. We're gonna grab your permit book, your license, and okay. whatever paper we have for your load. Sweet. Permit book, is all, everything's in there? Do you have anything at all in the back of the truck? No. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And who do you work for? <laughs> so the truck is a lease. I don't see a lease agreement anywhere in this book. Am I not seeing it? Uh, I, honestly, I don't even know what it would look like. How long have you worked for? Two and a half years. Okay, you get Oh yeah, I love it. That is important. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and then you got on the tracks? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead and change your status to on duty, not driving. Yeah. And I'm going to have you transfer your logbook to me. Okay. Well, so, they, on, your truck says on this side. Huh? You don't want one on each side. Okay. All right, the logbook's transferred perfectly. Cool. Uh, your company's duty number's in good standing. The license is valid. You're not suspended. No warrants. So all that stuff's good. Now we'll do the walk around portion, okay. and then I'll go underneath. The sail looks good, the steering's nice and tight, and yeah, the right side low beam doesn't work. The right side low beam? Yeah, but your high beam does. And then you guys do carry extinguishers and triangles? We do. Absolutely. Huh? Uh, do you have any blank paper log books in case that thing pops out on you? I do. Excellent. Okay, I'm gonna check all your back lights. Watch from there. Okay. All right, I'm gonna have you go ahead and turn your engine off and okay. open your hood for me. Both of them are released. Both truck and trailer? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna start in the front. Just listen to me through the window. Okay. It's on. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to check underneath. It takes a couple of minutes. Okay, slightly less. Okay, above 90 though? Yeah. Okay. When I'm done checking everything, I'm going to pop out the very back. Just watch for me. Okay. I'm going to yell for you to brake. Okay. Just push and hold your brake. I'm going to check every axle on the way back up. Sounds good. When I'm done checking them all, I'll pop out here in the front and yell release. Okay. All right? Yeah. air system check. Okay. To do that, turn the key to the on spot and come on out. I'm going to have you take both air lines, just collect them for me and set them down. I'm going to bleed your air out. Just set them down. Go ahead and come back to the truck. We're going to watch the two things to happen. The first one is, if your air gets low enough, you'll get a warning. The second one is when your air gets low enough, by design, your valve is going to pop. So there's the first one. And sometimes they reverse, which is fine, as long as they both happen. And some trucks are set high, some are set low. Yours is set around 50-ish, which is totally fine. All right, push your brake and hold it. Okay. Good. All right, so all we got then is the one headlight, and then uh, just in the markings for the uh. Nothing worth the ticket, just an inspection. I'll go print that off, it'll take a couple minutes. If you want to close your hood, put the other ones up, and okay. yeah, there you go. Okay, here's your book back. License awesome. is inside the cover, as okay. is your inspection. Again, right. not a ticket, it just shows the headlight and the markings. Okay. Any questions on those? Uh, yeah, it, does that get any CSA points or anything like any that? Any violation is CSA points. Okay. Well, actually that's not correct. There's one violation I know of that has no points attached to it. Um, and that could be a local law 
Like if we fail to follow some local ordinance, a lot of those have no points on them. Gotcha. But for right. the most part, they do. And here's the actual driver vehicle examination report. If you guys need to pause this, you can look at it or take a screenshot. If you guys need to pause this, go ahead and pause it. You can look at it so you can see what the actual report says. Shows you the location and how long the inspection took and stuff. And as you can see here, the violations that they found, I got two violations on this inspection. Violation code 390-21TB and also 393. 390.21TB and 393.24A and the violations discovered the first one for 390.21TB uh, carrier name and or USDOT number not displayed as required and that was on the right side so basically we have a magnetic thing that we just put on our door with our company name and USDOT number. So that just flew off when I was driving. The next violation, 393.24A, non-compliance with headlamp requirements, right side low beam and operable. And that's because my headlight went out when I was driving. Not the best report and it's not the worst report. There's no need to fight about Love's Truck Stop and Flying J Truck Stops as a truck driver. I did the hard work for you. Here's the difference between the two truck stops. From truck stop showers to truck stop rewards. Love Truck Stop versus Pilot slash Flying J. Let's talk about them. Let's start off with Love's Truck Stop. So that's definitely different from what Pilot or Flying J offers. I don't even think they have a service like that. So Love's Truck Care come in handy if you know you broke down, then they can come out to the rescue. Or if you have like a blown tire, they'll be able to come out and change that for you. The only thing is they're pretty expensive, you know, but what can you do if you don't know how to change your tire yourself or if you don't know how to work on your own equipment, which a lot of people like myself, we don't. <laughs> so basically what Truck Care is, is they offer roadside assistance, oil changes, tire changes, and more. So if you have a flat tire or a blown tire, they'll be able to come out and change that for you. Assuming you're the trucker that don't work on your own equipment. Of course, if you break down, you can also give them a call. They are pretty expensive though, but you know, sometimes you gotta pay to play especially if you don't know how to diagnose your own truck or change out the broken parts. So that's definitely a plus when it comes to Love's Travel Stop. And another benefit to Love's Travel Stop is your fill points, you're gonna be able to use some of your fill points towards minor engine repairs and some of the tires. So you know, that's a huge benefit. And speaking of fill points, Love's, they have an okay reward system. They do max out at four points per gallon though. But still, it's pretty good. To move up, starting with one point per gallon to move up to the next tier, I believe you have to earn a qualifying fill and basically a 75 gallons or more. And then you'll move up to, let's say you're already at one point per gallon. I think you'll move up to 1.5 or two points per gallon. But basically, every time you fill up 75 gallons or more, you'll move right up to a max of four points per gallon. Oh, also, with every 50 gallons or more, you'll be earning a free shower credit. Hey man, that's pretty cool. You don't have to drop 15 to 20 bucks on the shower. Just use your free shower credit and you're golden. Love's Travel Stop, they do have a mobile app Pretty nice design, pretty nice layout, easy to use. So that way you can keep track of your fill points, where you're at for points per gallon, free shower credits and more. The showers at Love's Truck Stop, I found them to be pretty clean, spacious. They're definitely nice. I like how you definitely have your own private bathroom basically but I will still definitely bring my own towels and my own shower shoes because you wouldn't want to catch athlete's feet or some type of fungus. It'd be 
pretty nasty. Love's truck stop, they do have a pretty decent laundry room. So if you do need to wash and dry your clothes and you prefer Love's, they also have that. So that's always nice, you know, if uh, you gotta wash your clothes, then there you have it. When it comes to Love's truck stop, they do offer free Wi-Fi. So that's another benefit if you are needing internet access or if you need something faster they do offer premium wi-fi do you like free parking you can find free parking at love's truck stop let's talk about the food that love's truck stop has i noticed loves they have less food options in the store however they do have a greater variety of fast food restaurants if you prefer that all you coffee lovers Love's Truck Stop, they do offer a nice variety of coffee. They have like a cappuccino machine and dark roast coffee, light coffee. Pretty much whatever you like when it comes to coffee, they should have. At least the ones I've been to. Last thing I'll say about Love's Truck Stop before we talk about Pilot slash Flying J Truck Stop. I have noticed that Love's fuel price it's definitely going to be higher than let's say pilot or a flying j truck stop like and subscribe if you are a loves lover i just made that up all right now let's talk about pilot slash flying j while you're not going to find a truck here at any of these locations but you will notice that they do have a better rewards program it's called my rewards plus and you can definitely max out at five points per gallon Unlike Love's, it's only four. To qualify and fail to move up from like one to 1.5 to two to 2.5, only 75 gallons per fill, and that will kick you over to the next tier. So if you're earning one, you fill up 75 gallons or more, you'll move up to 1.5. 75 gallons again, two points. So as you can imagine, the points, once you're earning five points per gallon, is gonna rack up pretty quick. And basically one point equals one cent with Loves and Pilot slash Flying J. Redeemable, you just redeem it in the store. If you want a bag of chips, use your points, swipe, you're good to go. Pilot slash Flying J also has a very nice mobile app that you can use. Basically, you know, you download it, you can check out your rewards points on there, how much you accumulate it, how much you're currently earning for points per gallon. And you can check out offers on there and your shower credit. And speaking of shower credits, Pilot slash Flying J does have a fairly clean shower. Not as big as Love's, but still pretty decent. You still get, they're usually clean, nice, and just what you need to take a nice hot shower. Just like Love's, they do have a laundry area so you can wash and dry your clothes, which is nice, you know, if, if you can't make it to a Love's or vice versa, you can't make it to a pilot, then you have loves. So that's cool, you know, it's always nice to be able to have a spot to wash your clothes. When it comes to the fuel prices, I noticed that Flying J slash Pilot, they do have a little bit lower on the fuel prices. So if you're looking for a cheaper fuel between the three of those, I would hit up your Pilot or Flying J, definitely. Flying J and Pilot, they do have better options when it comes to food. They even have hot food inside, so that's always cool. They got like pizza, chicken strips. Sometimes they have like potato wedges. And some of them also have a fast food in them like Subway. So if you're interested in any of those, uh, try them out, you know? But I definitely recommend eating healthy out here and you can find healthy foods at both places, Love's and Flying J and Pilot. Really, you should be eating healthy out here on the road. And you can find healthy foods and snacks at both Love's and Pilot. Just like your Love's Travel Center, Pilot slash Flying J offers coffee, of course. Gotta have coffee for everybody. And they do have like a cappuccino machine and a nice variety of coffee flavors to pick from. It's pretty good, try them out. But me personally, I would invest into a coffee machine for your truck. That'll definitely save you lots of money and you won't have to worry about spending lots of money 
on coffee at any of these truck stops. And if you're gonna go that route and buy your own coffee machine for your truck, you might as well buy a refrigerator and a microwave. That's also gonna save you lots of money down the road. Pilot does have Wi-Fi as well, so if you ever need to hop on the internet, stream some Netflix, there you go. Their parking lot is usually bigger than Love's, but at the downside, you're gonna have to pay for parking if you wanna reserve a spot. But that can be pretty good because pulling in late at night, uh, there's usually no parking spots. So if you have one reserved, good for you. Oh, and Pilot also has a certified cat scout. So that can definitely come in handy whenever you think that you're overweight on your axles or if you just need to get your overall weight. Let me know in the comments down below if you prefer Loves or Pilot slash Flying J. As for my personal preference, Loves win. Now that we have that out of the way, is a truck stop better than a rest stop? I'm not sure about that, and here's why. Truck stop versus rest stop, or you can call it rest area, same thing. Let's talk about it. So rest area, let's talk about that one first. I know a lot of new drivers, they get a little scared sometimes. They're not sure if they should sleep at a rest area or a truck stop or on the side of the road. And so I made this video to help you understand the difference between the truck stop or a rest area like I was saying before. Same thing. Rest stop areas, let's start off with that one first. Generally, your rest areas, uh, about like 98% of the time, you're just gonna be pull-throughs. So that's kind of nice, you know? You don't have to back into uh, a spot at the rest area. I mean, uh, if you're pulling in late at night, good chance you might have to be creative and find the parking spot done that a few times and they're definitely not going to be as busy as a truck stop i've been to a few different rest areas out here and generally they're not busier than the truck stop you got to think about that truck stops they have uh, two sides you got your side for the big trucks and you got your side for the cars so you got all that traffic versus a rest area with not as many parking spots for trucks and cars however on the downside of things that sun is bright very bright that's a little better seriously on the downside of things the bathrooms usually nasty i'll just be very honest about that they're not really kept as clean as the truck stop generally i mean you gotta catch that maintenance guy right after he cleans the bathroom for it to be uh, in good shape even then still a little smelly and if you're thinking about pulling into a rest stop area for the night to park uh, like I said earlier, it usually gets busy later at night, around 5 or 6 p.m. it starts to fill up. So I'll try to get there before if you want a decent parking spot. Oh, and another downside to rest areas, not all of them are going to be like well lit. So if you're worried about that being in a well lit area at night, of course, you know, uh, maybe go hit up a truck stop, you know, that way you're safe. If you're gonna be parking there not a lot of them are well lit so uh, I don't know about you guys I don't really like parking in a dark area for safety reasons but you know sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do out here if you packed your own lunch perfect spot to take a quick little 30 minute break go use the bathroom eat your goodies and uh, hit the road again wheels down just be careful of that bathroom. Truck stops are definitely usually the places I prefer. They're usually a lot more safer in my eyes. And not only that, they have about triple the amount of parking spots. Some of them, because some rest areas are pretty big as well. But a lot more parking spots. It's definitely gonna be more well lit you can say so not as dark and the maintenance that they do on their uh, bathrooms much more cleaner oh and they got showers if you guys need to use the showers I personally never had to shower out here because I'm not gone anything longer than a day maybe two days max out here that's the pros about being a regional truck driver 
depending on what company you're working for. So I really couldn't tell you how clean or dirty the showers are, but if it was me, I definitely would wear some like sandals or something in the shower. Wouldn't want to be walking barefooted in those. That's how you catch athletes' feet. Gross. No, thank you. And as far as uh, your truck stops go, I know a majority of them are going to have some type of restaurant or fast food chain in them. So if you didn't pack your lunch and you're feeling a little hungry, it's always great to have that option out there. Pick up some water if you need that or some other drinks and snacks. Real quick guys, let me know in the comments down below, do you prefer parking at a truck stop or a rest stop area? Which one? Let me know in the comments down below. So you got a really strong understanding of becoming a truck driver and what it takes. When you're out there on the road, you're gonna need a trucking GPS. Here's the best trucking GPS for truck drivers, a Garmin Dezel. If you need to change the height or the weight on this profile here, all you do is click the wrench icon. And as you can see, you can change your height and your width. So your height, you would just type in your height there. And same thing with the width. Click on that. And if you're extra wide, you'll be able to type that in here. Also, it has more details as such as the kingpin, the weir, axle length, the gross. That's how you change the weight there, the max weight. Max weight on the single axle or on your tandems. Numbers of axles, if you're pulling doubles like I am right now, you can type that in. This one's pretty useful to have is the hazards material here. So if you're pulling any one of these, you would just check it and it's gonna hook you up on the routes you're supposed to take and not supposed to take. Obviously you wanna double check which routes you're supposed to take when you're pulling hazmats. So, you know, you probably don't wanna go in any tunnels with hazmats. Also a side note, this GPS will work with a car. If you're looking to use this GPS for a truck, or for a straight truck, all you do is tap the plus icon and voila, you have the options right there. And now let's go ahead and check out some of the features of the Garmin Dezel OTR 700. This isn't the new version, it's the 700. The 710 is still similar. So clicking on the apps icon there, it's gonna bring up our all of our apps. And what I absolutely love about this Garmin is if you're on your brake or something, you can dial right from your Garmin. So 7889, dial. We couldn't connect that call. Please check the number and give it another try. Boom. Just like that, it's pretty cool. Also the Garmin Dazzle OTR does have voice activation. And to see the commands, you'll just go back to your apps, click on OK Garmin, and here are the commands that you can use. So this Garmin also allows you to look up the traffic. As you can see, open the Garmin Dezel app on your phone. I do not have it currently hooked up, but if you did, that's where you would go to check out live traffic. Let's check out the truck map. As you can see, it shows you the detailed routes, STAA preferred route and the TD preferred route. Not quite sure what those stand for, but they are there if you are the one that needs to use it. And yes, I'm in Twin Falls, Idaho. Super convenient. And if you're the one that uses a Garmin e-log, you'll just click that. And here you go. I don't have a Garmin e-log, but this is where you would go and it's all connected right to your GPS. You can look up your trip history right there, but I'm not going to because you'll know the addresses I've been to and we don't want that on YouTube. You can even check out your IFTA. So you can put in your trip reports and all that. This Garmin GPS is pretty cool because it does have a trip planner. And so let's do new trip, start new location, where I am now. And pretty much you'll just go with the process like that. You can check out your service history as well. 
As you can see, I don't have anything in there though, but if you're the one that wants to keep up with your maintenance, there you go. If you're looking to keep up to date with the weather, you would just click on weather. And as you can see, I do not have the Garmin Dezel app connected, but if you did, it would show the weather. Even the weather radar here, as you can see again, I don't have the app connected. Photo live, dang it, I don't have the app connected. I really need to connect the app so we can see this. <laughs> backup camera, this feature requires a wireless backup camera. If you do have a Garmin backup camera, you could connect it right to your GPS. Very convenient. And if you have loves points, click on loves, and you just connect the Garmin Dezel app again to check out your points. Or you can uh, click on find loves and the search result, it will show you the love truck stops that are nearby. Same thing with the Pilot Flying J, click on that. You can also hook up the app, it'll show your points, or you can click find Pilot Flying J. And here are the Flying J's that are close by. I'm currently at the first one there, at the Flying J up top. Let's go back to apps. Smart notifications. Basically, if someone texts you, it's gonna pop up right on the screen there. You'll be able to read your text message right on your Garmin GPS. I don't recommend it. I recommend paying attention to the road at all times while you're driving, not texting and driving. I don't have the Garmin Dezel app, but if you did, there you go. It'd be all connected together. Getting that Garmin Dezel app is definitely gonna enable a lot of uh, things here that you can't do without it. So maybe it's a great idea to go ahead and get that, to get the max out of your Garmin Dezel OTR 700. It's pretty cool if you want to rearrange the screen, you just hold down on any of those like this and voila. So you pretty much get the point, but you can configure it any way you want. Very convenient. So if you click where to, you can check out all the options. Uh, I have it configured it this way. So that's why mine is looking a little bit different. But if you want, you can pause it here and copy my exact layout. Let me tell you why. Because the rest areas, boom, very convenient. Click on it and it shows you nearby rest areas. Very handy if you really have to go. Wait stations, shows you the nearby wait stations. So if you're looking to avoid those, and I don't recommend it, there you go. Truck services, you know, shows you tires, towing, truck repair, mobile services that are nearby. Very convenient if you break down. Also services, trailer repairs, scales, and wait stations. TripAdvisor. If you're looking for hotels, things to do, or restaurants, here you go. Scroll down a little bit. Let's check out field prices. Oh, what do you know? I don't have the Garmin Dezel app connected, but if you did, you can check out the field prices here and they're pretty accurate. Coordinates, gives you the exact coordinates that you are. Check that out, that's exactly where I'm at. So if you wanna look that up on uh, Google Maps or something, you'll know my location. And so let's go ahead and actually view that on the Garmin app view on map and there you go so if you have an emergency you can get your coordinates like that and give it to the dispatcher let's check out some more stuff here oh yeah so if you want to make your layout exactly like mine basically all you would have to do is click on add shortcut we'll click on the time and any one of these data fields you can uh, put in there I currently have mine set up as the time but you can do any one of these, pretty handy. Same thing with uh, the speed down here. You click on that and it'll give you all kinds of good information as you can see on the screen. Some things that you might wanna know. Let's see the options button, has uh, traffic data, as you can see right there, what's up ahead. You can even move it around, it's pretty cool, I didn't know that. When you're trying to go to a place like here, I'm trying to go to Yakima, it's definitely gonna give you two options for the most part. Like 99% of the time, it'll give you two options to pick from. So if you're trying to go the longer route, you can go the longer route. It's usually in blue. The faster route is usually in pink as shown right here. 
even shows you the weight station that pops up in 107 miles. If you want to get a detailed view of it, you just click on it. If you click on the top here, it's going to give you pretty much like a, a playbook, a play by play, you know, 400 feet, 0.3 miles. As you can see, if there's any hills, uphills, descents, very detailed here. So you can know what to expect pretty much on a road. And if you need to, you can go back to options, edit route, and you can edit your route here. So you can do detours or you can shape the route that you want. Just wanted to show you that real quick. And if you realize that your volume is all out of whack, you can just adjust the volume right here. Just slide the little slider there. You can also enable alerts and tones, spoken traffic alerts, and more. Let's go back to settings. If you need to update your Garmin, you update it right there. If you want to change the vehicle icon, it's pretty cool. Here's uh, different icons you can pick from. The blue little guy, it's pretty cool. I currently have mine at this one here. But if you prefer the blue one like that, or this one, then you can just swap it out, no big deal. RV for all the RV people. You can even change the driving map view. So you just click on driving map view. And I currently have mine as 3D of course, but you can change it to your choosing. You can pick how detailed you want your map. I currently have mine as more. Map theme, I currently have mine as Garmin which is the best in my opinion. But you can change it to Navigon, France, or however you want. Here's the different options, Netherlands, Denmark, United Kingdom, yeah, whatever setting that you want to pick, you can pick. But I'll put mine back to Garmin because that's my favorite. We'll go back, click on map layers. So you can uh, have different layers as you see here, traffic, 3D, parking, popular truck paths, travel history, I like the travel history because it just outlines where you've been in blue. Pretty convenient. So you can customize how you want it. Just like this, you'll just do custom search and whatnot. But yeah, that's how I have mine set up right now. You can copy it if you want, no problem. You can install your maps if you want, I believe. I haven't done that myself, that's just how it came. Navigation. So I have my navigation set up as calculation mode, faster time. You can also do avoidances. So if you want to avoid the U-turns, highways, ferries, carpool lanes, and whatnot. Custom avoidances, you just click on add avoid area if that's what you need or add avoided road. Toll roads. I allow them environmental zones, restricted mode, GPS simulator. Not sure what that is. Oh, it says for indoor use. It even has a driver assist. So driver alerts, speeding alerts, route preview, brake planning, proximity alerts. Pretty cool. Wireless networks. That's where you control the Bluetooth and more. Display. You can change the color mode. I have mine set up to auto because it bounces from day to night. Brightness 100%, but you can change it. Display timeout, two minutes. Screenshot, I don't know, I don't ever use that. So it's unchecked. Change the date and time right there, or the language. The Garmin Desert. Is definitely the best trucker GPS that's out on the market and I'll go ahead and link right in the description for you.